What's going on, peeps? How's everybody doing? Welcome to the Mark and Will Show. I hope everybody's had a great hump day. Uh, hasn't worked too hard. Hasn't been too hot. Got a little special show for you guys tonight. You know, something different. Boxing. All that good stuff. So we're going to dive into that. And uh, we got a special guest. Graduate from J-Town. So we want to go ahead and check on him and see what's going on. Um, have fun like we always do. Let me tell you guys, this is the best way to find us at Mark and Will Show Everything. We're talking about Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, you don't stop, Instagram, YouTube, all that good stuff. Don't forget about gaming, Mark and Will Gamers on Twitch, uh, Facebook, that's what we're on now. We got the Players Club, which is good for all the youth. So we want to definitely go ahead and get that. So make sure you go ahead and follow, subscribe, join big time. We want to go ahead and knock that out. But, you know, we got we got a special guest. We want to make sure we go ahead and get him on immediately because he's doing some training and stuff like that. So let's get to it. Today, we got Nazelle, the real deal Reed, J-Town High School grad and amateur boxer. How you doing? I'm doing good. Doing good, good. So what's going on? The mayor, which that's what we call him on the show, Brandon Cosby, said, you know, we had to get you on. So what's going on with you? And, uh, and and boxing and stuff. So you got a match coming up or anything? Yeah, I got a match this Saturday. And then after that, I'm supposed to go to the Junior, junior Golden Gloves in uh, Orlando, Florida. Okay. okay. Tell them who you got with you. Uh, this is my coach right here, and this is my little brother in the background. Okay, okay. What's coach's name? What's your coach's this name? Coach Nick. Hey, what's up, fellas? My what's... name's Nicholas Barris. Okay. Uh, I own and operate a, a youth development boxing program called Louisville Select Boxing. Okay. I've been doing it for about 11 years. Nacelle has trained with me uh, consistently for right at about four years. Mm -hmm. He's 17 years old. He'll be turning 18 in September. This Saturday, he fights in an event that I'm putting on, uh, that our club is putting on called the SummerSlam Boxing Championships. It's one of the largest amateur boxing events uh, in the United States. Okay. Uh, the, the winners of all the open division fights will receive a championship belt, a SummerSlam championship belt. Uh, Nacell recently uh, won the Indiana Golden Gloves Youth okay. Division, which is for 17 and 18 year old fighters. So he's so, the Indiana Golden Gloves consist of Kentucky, Indiana, Illinois. Uh, so it's actually three states that he that he represented. Okay. And uh, I'm taking him after this week, uh, the second the second week of August, down to Orlando, Florida, to fight in the in the youth uh, Golden Gloves National Championship tournament. Okay. So he he'll be representing the Kentucky area. Uh, in that tournament as the 147-pound uh, division fight. Okay. What time is the uh, fight uh, this Saturday? This Saturday fight starts at uh, 7.30 be the first fight. It's at 1415 Mitchell Avenue in Jeffersonville, Indiana. We're doing it outside. Mm -hmm. uh, we collaborated with the, with the uh, boxing gym from over in Jeff. And uh, I'm putting on the show, but we're going to utilize – their parking lot, and uh, they've got a lot of really talented fighters as well. A lot of kids from Louisville actually go over to Jeff to box. Okay. Because it's a pretty uh, fluent gym. They've got uh, a really nice setup over there. Okay, cool. So, uh, 
Let's get into some uh, questions. Now, Sal, how old were you when you started boxing? 13. 13? Okay. So so what led you to boxing, man? How did you get started? Uh, I really was just looking to do some type of sport. And I was, I was living downtown, so there wasn't much to do. And uh, I just searched up boxing. And two gyms popped up, and I went to uh, the gym I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, my mom took me at the time and just signed up, started boxing. Okay, was you, let me ask you this. I know you said you looked up boxing. Was you like a fan of, of, of boxing? You said what? Was you a fan of boxing? Did you watch, you know, did you, was you watching boxing a lot and that was piqued your interest? Before I started boxing, I wasn't really a big fan of boxing. I knew what it was and I, I just was interested in getting to it. And then I, I really liked the, the sport, so I kept doing it. Cool. So let me ask you this. How's training, man? For somebody who never did boxing and decided that you wanted to do it, man, how, how what's training consist of? Uh, it just for me, it's just hard work. Like you just, I listen Tell to what my, you do for your regimen. Uh, I run, I hit the bag, I do the slip rope, I do a lot of sit ups, I shadow box a lot, and then I do some sparring. That's Coach, these are the basics. Coach, let me ask you since I got you on here. Um, how much running is he doing? How much training of the during the week does he has to do, or any boxer that you work with? Uh, I schedule five workouts a week for the athletes. Uh, I don't train athletes that don't come to the workouts. So if you miss, if you miss a, if you if you no call no show me or you don't come to the workout, I just assume you quit, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not gonna waste my time and I'm not gonna waste the athlete's time. One thing that I'm real proud of not sell for and, and generally whenever someone brings their kids to me and wants me to train their kids at the time I was right across my boxing gym was across from uh, Cardinal Stadium on Floyd Street right and uh, I still remember it like it was uh, yesterday now sales mother is a is a attractive woman and I remember she came in and uh, she seemed like a young young woman to me and she had him with him and his brother and uh, I thought it might have been the, her little brothers, right? Because uh, she seemed pretty young. And she talked to me. She said, I'm going to get my sons into this boxing, blah, 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 what they got to do. So uh, I told her the hours of the boxing. I don't charge any athletes to compete or training costs or anything. So uh, I knew that that wouldn't be an issue was uh, financially. A lot of people can't do it because right. they can't afford it. But I don't, I don't charge the athletes. So uh, what ends up coming down to whether or not they can do it is whether or not they're going to be consistent, right? Okay. And, and if they're going if they're going to develop the accountability to come to practice every day. So after several weeks of his mother bringing him, uh, I no longer seen his mother. She she didn't she didn't pop in the gym at the end of practice. I wouldn't see her. And uh, a couple couple nights when I was leaving the gym. I would ride, as I was riding home, I seen Nacelle walking. And uh, he's only 13 years old at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I thought, you know, we're, you know, I'm wondering where he's walking to. I figured right. he was walking home. But uh, next day I talked to him. I said, hey, man, where, where was you walking to? Where you live at? And he said, I live at 2nd and Broadway, mm. which is about four and a half or five miles from the gym. Right. And I, and I thought. I said, man, you walk all the way to Second and Broadway. He said, sometimes I do. He said, but but I usually try to catch the bus uh, if if it's you know if the bus is running on time. So I found it I found it to be a quality that showed that he wanted to do it. Right. That it wasn't something that his mama put him up to. Right. And uh, he kept coming and kept coming, and through the four years that I've trained him, uh, he's never missed a workout. Uh, and, and I'm tough. I'm tough on the athletes. I, I have a high standard of excellence that I that I put forth for anyone that I train because I want them to get the most out of what they're doing. I don't want them to come here and waste their time. 
So today's workout, for example, uh, he ran he ran approximately about 3.2 miles. Okay. Uh, we did that over a series of different exercises. So we would shadow box, run a sprint, shadow box, run a quarter mile, shadow box. So I, so I mixed the workout up uh, for this week particularly. But he'll run generally between three and four miles a day, uh, five days a week. Uh, we'll hit the bag. We try to get, I try to time the amount of bag work, but he'll do about, he'll do right at about four hours a week on the heavy mm-hmm. bag. Uh, I break down all the other drills, but generally our practices are about three hours. And then I, I've also uh, signed him up with the membership to the YMCA okay. so he can get additional training uh, on his time, right? Mm-hmm. So he can't just do it only when I'm watching. Right. If he really wants to box, he's going to have to do it when nobody's watching. And uh, I'm fortunate to say that he is the Golden Gloves champion of this area. Uh, I've had some outstanding fighters, including uh, DeMontez Duncan, uh, Chauncey Bender Jr., uh, Troy Davis Jr., all those guys was all Golden Gloves champions. And I sales one of about 25 athletes that I've coached over the last 11 years that have won the Golden Gloves. I think his potential is uh is very very high Mm -hmm. so if he continues with the work that he's got uh continues doing the right things i think he's going to be a a very successful fighter uh hopefully as a professional right now sal let me ask you this what's what's your um boxing style man my boxing record no style Style. Style? Mm -hmm. I say I'm a boxer, like, uh, something like Terrence Crawford. Okay. He's a, he's a, he's a, what you call a boxer puncher. Mm -hmm. Uh, he tends to want to counter punch, uh, but he's tall. He's got real long arms. So I prefer for him to be a pressure fighter. Okay. And, uh, rely on his conditioning. But he he typically likes to counter punch. Okay. And the only the only reason I don't let him fight like that all the time that that I want him to press the fights is because in amateur boxing it's just three rounds, right? Right. right. So if you wait, you wait, you wait, you can get down on points pretty easy in an amateur boxing match. So I try to get him fighting a little bit faster than what he likes to fight at, which is okay. It's just a uh. It's just a, a the, the style you've got to do for amateur boxing is what you call Olympic style boxing. Right, right. And it's a lot of ha 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 ha. It's a lot of busy shit, right? Right. And uh, he likes to counter punch. He's a very efficient fighter. He doesn't he doesn't throw a lot of punches, but he's got a really really uh, stiff jab, and uh, he's got a big right hand behind him. So, it, but he he would be what you call a boxer puncher. Okay. Is it a fighter that you like to emulate or like to watch? Uh, I like to watch a lot of fighters, but mostly the technical ones like Earl Spence or uh, Shakur, Tank Davis, Mm -hmm. uh, people like that, and then old-time fighters too. Okay, that's cool. You you, you already named two of them that's got a a fight – uh, this weekend, besides you, you know what I'm saying, Crawford and Spence. So, you know, that's those. That's a big fight that's also coming up. Let me ask you this. What is the toughest part of being an amateur fighter for you? Uh, a lot of times you're out your comfort zone, I feel. Yeah, that's, that's about it. Like, you, know, you don't get to do what you want to do. Okay. Okay. And that's, is that because, like, your coach said that, you know, it's Olympic-style boxing, you got to get the points and things like that? Does that kind of prohibit you to really go ahead and, and, and show your style that you want to do? Yeah. Okay. okay. Coach, let me ask you this. And, uh, Nacelle, you can also answer this. What What's going to take for him to go pro? Oh, he'll be a professional fighter. Uh, right now uh, – when, when you build an athlete, um, you, you don't want to skip any steps of the development of the athlete. 
Mm-hmm. So he's he's still very young. He's 17 years old. Um, he has all the tools to to become a professional, right? Okay. But what's most important about when uh, athletically he's got the ability, uh, he's got the boxing IQ, he's starting to have the pedigree, right? Right. So he's winning tournaments. He's winning all of his club fights. He's winning all of his matches regionally. Uh, he needs to he needs to be able to elevate, go to a national level, at a national tournament and dominate, and and have the separation from him and everyone else. So sometimes uh, he may not understand the urgency that he's got to fight under. If he's in there with a guy, there's been a couple times where he's dominated a fighter, and uh, and after the fight, I'll talk to him about his performance, and I won't be happy. Mm-hmm. He'll say, "Well, I won, I dominated, whatever," and I said, "No, nah, you got to step on those kind of guys. You got to step on them. If there's no reason for them to be in the ring with you, then you got to get them out of there." Right. And uh, so that's something that I that I've continue to work on him with is understanding the urgency to get some of these guys out of there and finish right. with a spectacular finish as opposed to just winning a unanimous decision or winning a winning a close fight but actually completely dominating and making it where uh, there is no there is no conversation on whether or not uh, you can become a professional right uh, but to become a professional, he has to exhibit the, the qualities that professionals have. He has to be on time. Mm-hmm. He has to be diligent with his training. He has to have all his own equipment. He has to have the same thing you see Kobe Bryant have, the same thing you see uh, Jerry Rice have, right? They're never, they're never late. They're never, they, they're never, there's never a moment where they don't have their, their boxing shoes or their gloves or their football or whatever right. sport somebody's a pro, you have to have professional qualities. So I would imagine with uh, the pace that he's on right now, uh, that by the time he's 20 years old, uh, which is about two, a little bit over two years away, he should, he should have accomplished everything that he could possibly accomplish in amateur boxing with the exception of going to the Olympics, because that's a, that's every four years, right? Uh, and that's a that's a little bit different process to qualify for. But he should be a national champion. He should be multi-time Golden Gloves regional champion. He should have wins over some of the best other amateurs, because what happens when you turn pro is the same guys that are at the top of amateur boxing. In five years, six years, they'll be at the top of professional boxing. Right. So when you see in guys, for example, like uh, Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence this weekend, they were actually rivals as amateur fighters. They wasn't in the same weight division, so they didn't have matches against each other. But all these guys have boxed as amateurs. So like when Mm -hmm. people talk about, Ryan Garcia, Shakur Stevenson, and Devin Haney. Well, the people that have already seen them fight as amateurs against each other know exactly who's going to win the fights, right? Right, right. They've already seen them fight. You know, a zebra don't change his stripes. So he's got to uh, exhibit the qualities uh, and dominate at an amateur level. And then if he does if he does that, professional boxing would just be a rollover from the success that he has as an amateur. Hey, Coach, let me ask you this real quick. How much uh, film work do you guys do? Is that an important part in training and stuff like that for him to watch his bouts or anything? Yeah. Yeah, so typically what you have uh, when when you're taking athletes, depending on what level of development they're at, right? So I I don't do a lot of film work with young athletes, like 13, 14 years old. What I try to do with guys that age is increase their athleticism, uh, increase their body, their strength, uh, because what ends up happening is is that they'll start understanding the concepts of boxing 
better as they get older, right? Mm-hmm. So certain things that aren't as important uh, for an athlete that's maybe 13, 14, 15 become significantly important for a guy 17, 18, 19. Right. So, the, so like how he said when he got into boxing, he didn't really watch boxing because he was a kid. Right. You know, don't know kids be watching. And if they do watch it, they don't understand. They may not necessarily understand what is going on with boxing. So boxing's a lot like a, a good wine or a good steak. Uh, it's better with age. So as he matures and he learns more about boxing, uh, that that interest in boxing increases. And that's when you start to incorporate film study. That's when you start incorporating talking to older fighters, uh, learning the history of the sport. Uh, but but I think that like teaching a ten year old kid who Jack Johnson is, they don't they don't understand the significance of a Jack Johnson. Mm-hmm. They don't understand the what a Muhammad Ali had to go through, right? So now as a seventeen year old man, I can now I can now explain to the significance of how great Muhammad Ali's achievements were. That as a fifteen year old Muhammad Ali went to segregated schools. So it wasn't even until he was 16 years old that he went to schools with white people, right? So certain things that that uh, that me and him just now enjoyed, uh, we finished our training and we sat here and we ate some food. Muhammad Ali was never allowed to be in a white man's home eating food as a teenager, right? That was almost right, taboo. Right. Uh, so, so those things, young young men may not understand until they start understanding the concepts of culture, right? And boxing's got a got a uh, extensive history. And as he is watching film study, you can start understanding the amount of pressure that was on a Muhammad Ali when he was 22 years old and became the world champion, right? Right. right. It, you know, he's faced with. He's faced with Jim Crow laws. He's faced with civil rights movements going on. He's faced with people uh, threatening his life. So now he, now this young man's starting to understand life and death, uh, racial politics, uh, uh, diversity, culture. He can now understand that. But it would be kind of hard to tell a 12-year-old kid uh, what Muhammad Ali had to go through as a young man because they haven't, they, they don't have the experiences to relate to that yet, right? They're just right. kids. Right, right. Lasell, let me let me ask you, what, what what's your record? Uh, I'd say I have about forty five fights. Wow. I, I think I'm like forty and five or some somewhere around there. Wow. So, how long has it taken you guys to train for this upcoming fight? Oh, we, we don't stop training. Mm-hmm. So we go, so amateur boxing, uh, there's fights almost, I, I typically do about one fight a month, but you okay. could fight guys, uh, you could fight them almost every week. So the the key to amateur boxing is to try to develop the athlete. Uh, and what I, tr- what I like to do is I like to try to do about 10 to 15 fights a year. And a real healthy number and a big indicator of someone that, that can turn professional is the athlete that's got about 75 fights, right. right? Because at that point, you've seen them box people. You've seen them box Latino fighters. You've seen them box black fighters. You've seen them box white fighters. You've seen them box international fighters. So uh, fighters from all different regions uh, and people got different styles. So. Uh, my job as the trainer is to see what style he he does well against and what styles he struggles against. Right. And then we go back, the guys that he struggles with, we go back and we work on whatever qualities it's going to take to beat those type of fighters, right? So you've heard you've heard people say styles make fights. Uh and and that's a that's a big so so boxing's a lot like paper rock scissors in the regard that rock beats scissors paper beats rock uh you, you know and, and it's like that almost every time like like 
what makes a fighter like a Floyd Mayweather uh, so successful is that he makes the adjustment against any fighter. So he don't really have a style. Right. What he does is he just adjusts to whatever they're doing and he adjusts to beat whatever they're doing. But he don't fight the same way every fight, you right. know. He just makes adjustments and then whatever the adjustment is dominates that style and then he goes on to win. And he don't even really have a style. It's it's just he just makes an adjustment. If you if you're mm -hmm. using your jab and you're utilizing that, he'll take your jab away from you, right? He might use his shoulder roll to do that. He may use parrying punches like that. So, uh, so with Nacel, he he's he's about halfway through his amateur career as far as uh, the amount of fights that he would need. Mm -hmm. But he he hasn't seen all of the styles, okay. so I don't particularly know what he's going to struggle with because as he's developing as a 13, 14, 15 year old kid, his body's also developing and changing. Right. So now he's finally filling out as a young man. Uh, he weighs about, walk around weight about 160 pounds. He'll fight in tournaments at 147 pounds. But it's not until I see him fight consistently at that weight before I can determine really what level he's on because when he started boxing, he weighed 100 pounds. Okay. So he's okay. fighting other kids 100 pounds, and then he weighs 105, and then he gets real tall, and then he weighs 120. And, and it's just – you know, kids develop differently. Some guys don't get no bigger at 13, 14 years old. Right, right, this right. Kid, this kid may grow another two inches and put on another 25 pounds before he's a full-size man. Right. You know, so I, I need to see where, where his development and where his body's at before I would put him into professional boxing. Right. Coach, let me ask you this. What What is it going to take for him to win Saturday? Repeat that again, sir. What, I said, what is it going to take for him to win Saturday? Now, Sales got to utilize his jab. He's got to fight with some urgency. Uh, he's fighting a 23-year-old guy coming down from uh, Indianapolis that's got more experience. Uh, you know, uh, quite frankly, he's got to get fucking mean, right? Uh, there's got to be there's got to be an on-off switch that that he understands that Saturday uh, it's not just a boxing match because this guy's coming to take everything from him. Mm -hmm. This guy, and, and although it's only one fight and we could say, oh man, you know, just one, one amateur boxing match. You gotta, you gotta be excellent every day of your life. If you want to be excellent, you can't just pick and choose what days you want to be somebody. Right. Right. Uh, so he's got to be that man on Saturday. And if he relies on his training, he does what he's been coached to do, and he relies on the things that he works on, he's going to have a big day Saturday. Uh, I believe in him as a young athlete. I've seen a, a lot of kids uh, not believe in themselves. Uh, I think he believes in himself. And, and if he shows up, uh, just like he's got the moniker, the nickname, the real deal. If he shows up and he is the real deal, he's going to blast this guy on Saturday. This ain't going to be no fight. Right. You're going to watch him, and when you see him, you're going to say, well, I see why. I see the potential. I see why the coach gave him that name. I see I see the training. I see the, the work ethic. Now, if he shows up and some guys like uh, you fellas that are on the podcast are watching from the stands – and you think you can get in the ring and beat him, then he ain't really the real deal. Right, right. He's got to show that he's he's got to show that he's a that he's a level above other athletes. That that when you watch him, you go, oh shit, that's the guy that I want to see again. Uh, I believe he can do it. I've seen him. I've seen him rise up in similar situations. And uh, I think Saturday you're gonna see a, a big a big uh, coming out party for the real deal. Tell everybody again, once again, when, where, can they uh, watch him fight Saturday? Saturday, the address is 1415 Mitchell Avenue, Jeffersonville, Indiana. First fight starts at 730. Tickets are $20. You can purchase them at the door. It is an outdoor venue. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got seating. 
We've got uh, tents available to try to get people out of the heat if it's overwhelming with the heat. Uh, bottled water. Uh, there's approximately 16 fights on the card. Nacelle will be one of the featured fights toward the end of the event. Uh, th this is for the SummerSlam Boxing Championships. We got fighters coming in from uh, Chicago, uh, Detroit, Nashville, Tennessee, Cincinnati, Ohio, St. Louis, uh, Indianapolis. And typically what I do is I match up the best fighter from Louisville in that, in that division against a guy from the best fighter from Detroit, right? So he's, he, he happened to get a guy from Indianapolis that uh, wants to come down here and, and take what he's been working for. But I think on Saturday, uh, Nacelle is going to show up and show out and uh, yeah. he's going to represent for the hometown. I like that. I like that. Hey, I want to thank you, Nacelle and Coach, for joining the Mark and Will Show. Wish you guys nothing but the best. Bring it home. Tell him thank you for having us on. Oh, thank you for having us on. All right, no problem. Hey, definitely Where can gonna... they follow you at, Nacelle? Yeah, go ahead. Follow Let them know. The real deal, Nacelle Reed. Okay. Follow him on Instagram at the Real Deal Nacelle Reed. You can check us out, Louisville Select Boxing. We love y'all. God bless y'all, Mark and Will. Y'all do a great job. I appreciate the opportunity getting on your show, and I look forward to seeing you guys on Saturday. Hey, and also we're gonna bring you guys back on again, man. Without a doubt. Thank you guys. Appreciate you. Thank you. Big time. That's what it's about. Coach is on it. Nacelle is gonna go ahead and take care of business. Also. Hey, if you guys get a chance, make sure you go over there, check them out. You know, you still going to have time to get back for the the, uh, the fight later on. But go ahead and show them love, show them support. That's what we're talking about, the real deal. And the coach, he, gets, he lets you know where you can find him at. Also, if you got somebody that's looking to be trained, you heard him. He know what he's talking about. So, hey, short, sweet. We out of here. Enjoy Wednesday. Peace out. <laughs> it's APM. Let's get it. Mark and Wheel. Yeah, yeah. Mark and Wheel. Yeah, yeah. It's the Mark and Wheel Show. It's the Mark and Wheel Show. Monday to Friday, player. Watch it while you own it. Go. It's the Mark and Wheel Show. It's the Mark and Wheel Show. Catch them at 8 p.m. They're gonna tell you what they know. It's the Mark and Wheel Show. It's the Mark and Wheel Show. Monday through Friday, player. Watch it while you own it. Go. It's the Mark and Wheel Show. It's the Mark and Wheel Show. Catch them at 8 p.m. They're gonna tell you what they know. <laughs>